A string is an immutable instance of the string class. Therefore, we can say a string is an immutable object of the string class. Once created, the immutable string object cannot be changed. Let's consider the following program statement. Welcome is assigned, and then you can see in double quotes we have hello world. Now, if we consider this mapped onto the execution space, from the string class we have an object being created. This is the object, and we can see that it will be given an ID, it will be given a type, and of course we can see it's got the value, and the value has clearly come from here. And of course we then label this particular object with welcome, which is welcome because we can see here we have the word welcome. So when we see this program statement, welcome is assigned hello world, we need to realize that an object is created and the value will be as shown here, hello world. Now let's consider a program that will do this. Here you can see the program, the first line welcome is assigned hello world, creates this object and gives it the appropriate label. And then of course we can print the ID, print the type and print the value as shown by these three program statements. Of course, when we look at the runtime, this is what we get. So this particular line is responsible for outputting this ID here. This line is responsible for outputting this type here. And of course, here we're printing welcome, which prints this value to the screen here. Let's consider the first program statement in this small program in isolation. And we can see it here. Welcome is assigned hello world. Now, earlier in the playlist, we talked about various models associated with the way in which Python assigns. And I like to think of this as follows. This name is bound to this particular object. So when we see this particular assignment statement, in my mind's eye, I see something like this. I see an object that has an ID, a type, and a value, which in this case is clearly Hello World, and it's labeled appropriately. Now when we look at the value, I like to think of um, the value in this case being a string as looking something like this. So that each individual letter as it appears in the two words hello world kind of have their own little region as you can see here. So the H is in this box if you like of the overall value, the E is in this box. Here we can see there's a space, now that's the space that occurs between the two words hello and world. And this particular string, as it's referred to, is called a string because we string together all of the individual bits, where H is an individual bit, E is an individual bit, so is the L, so is this L, so is the O, so is the space, and so on, towards the end of the string. Now we can, what's called, index this particular string. But of course, we also need to give it a name, and I'm going to call it welcome. So the whole thing is known as welcome. But we have this indexing referred to as forward indexing. Now what this means, it means if I wanted to get at this H here, then I can get at it for reading and displaying on the screen, for example, by using this name, welcome, and this number zero. If I want to get at this E, I use the same name welcome and this index number one. But also we have what's called backward indexing, which is shown here, where we start at minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, all the way in this particular case to minus 11. Let's just concentrate on the value of the string object we're concerned with in this particular video. And I'm showing it here. And of course, we're going to give it an appropriate name and we know the name is going to be welcome. And we will have what's referred to as forward indexing, where we start at zero and we go forward in this particular case, all the way up to 10. And of course, we also have backward indexing, where we start at minus one and we come back, as you can see here. And in this particular case, we come back as far as minus 11. Now the whole string is referred to by the name welcome. So if I wanted to print the entire string, we would use the word welcome. But if I wanted to get at an individual bit of it, for example, let's just say I wanted to get at the H, well, I would use the word welcome, as you can see, 
and in square brackets you can see I've got zero and of course that zero is because the index is a zero but of course we also have backward indexing for strings in Python so to get at the same H well I would use the same word welcome and in the square brackets you can see I've got minus 11 because that's the index here minus 11 if I wanted to get at another bit of this overall string i.e. this R in the word world then I use the same name welcome because that's what the label is and of course I'm using this index number here inside the square brackets but of course we have this backward indexing so I can use the same name welcome again and in the brackets I can have minus 3 let's have a look so this one is welcome square brackets minus 3 now I also want to get at the gap that appears between the word hello and the word world i.e. this one and of course that's got the same name welcome and it's got the index 5 that's forward index but of course we can always backward index this as well and of course we have welcome and we can see in the brackets we have minus 6 now I've called that a gap now in truth that will be an ASCII code and ANSI code and of course this particular ANSI code in our number system will have the value of 32 and indeed capital H will have its own ANSI code so will the E and so will the L and so on okay let's consider the string we've just been concerned with and I'm going to show it here so we can see we have hello world we know it's called welcome and we know we can get at different bits of it now when I'm talking about different bits of it I mean different parts of it so if there's been any confusion there with earlier words I've been using in the actual video when I say bits I wasn't talking about bits and bytes I meant various parts of the overall string so let's have a look at a, a program that will help us explain what's going on here now it's a pretty straightforward program and we can see here it says welcome is assigned hello world and on the next line we print welcome and then we print welcome and in square brackets we have the zero and on the next line we print welcome and in the square brackets we have minus 11 so when this program executes what we will get is this so we can see that when we come to this line we print all of this string here when we come to this line print welcome zero well clearly we can see that this is pointing to this part of the string and we can see that the H gets printed here and when we come onto this line well we can see that the welcome and the minus 11 in brackets is this pointing to here which is the H again so the H gets displayed on the screen let's alter the program slightly here's the program again and when this actually executes we're going to get this particular output here and very quickly when you do this line print welcome all of this gets printed here now when you come to print welcome and in square brackets you can see there's five well clearly that's this label here which we can see is pointing to this space remember the thing that had the ANSI code of 32 and of course what that will do when it goes to the screen is print this space here and because it's a space we can't actually see it but it is a space there then we come on to this one print welcome and in brackets minus six well it's clearly this label here that we're dealing with which is pointing to the same place within the string and of course that space there gets printed here let's alter the program slightly again here we can see the program slightly altered and when we run this program we're going to get this output so this line will give hello world because it prints all of the string whereas this line we're going to print welcome square brackets 8 using forward indexing and you can see that that's clearly pointing to the R so the R gets printed here and then finally we print welcome and in square brackets we can see there's minus 3 which is in fact pointing to the R again and of course that gets printed to the screen as you can see here Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.